Time is the most precious resource in the universe. The only naturally occurring currency in existence, time cannot be created, only kept. But time is not the same everywhere. I've waited years. How can civilizations spanning the cosmos synchronize their time when it is constantly fluctuating? I wish we had more time. And how can an understanding of this phenomenon deepen our understanding of the universe? Welcome to Lanar Hasano, an original work of science fiction created by me, Blake DeWeese. I began building this world in 2016. Over the years, it's morphed and changed and grown exponentially. In today's video, We'll cover how the species of the galaxy keep a standardized and accurate time in this universe. And I promise, more interesting than it sounds. If you like what you see here, consider subscribing to the channel to learn more. When the Anarans and Eolhurk formed Syndicate Space over 1500 years ago, one of the first problems they ran into was how to keep time. Each species had developed their own calendar system relative to their society. Reconciling them in a standardized format would be extremely difficult, and they knew that as more species were added to their civilization, the problem would only compound. The solution was simple, start over. The founding year of Syndicate Space was deemed year one post-Alliance and would progress from there. Olara was chosen as the seat of government for the newly formed nation. Olara is a moon with a very stable orbit that would be used as the standard for all Syndicate space. One day on Olara is equivalent to 36 Earth hours, and one year consists of 411 days. The date would be notated as the day of the year, followed by a decimal point, followed by the year. This provides a clear and legible notation. But measuring time on an interstellar level is much more complicated than just establishing a base. Time is relative, and if this civilization was to span the cosmos, a way of measuring it consistently was needed. To do this, time is measured on the quantum level. Measuring quantum phenomena like atomic transitions or electromagnetic waves serves as a stable and reliable means of determining time, as these occurrences are consistent across the universe. The hour of the day on Olara is calculated on the quantum level and synchronized across syndicate space using the quantum chronometric network. You can think of these like very complicated clocks. But standardizing time across planets is relatively simple. The real difficult part is accounting for faster than light travel. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity states that space and time are not separate entities, but are woven together into a single continuum Objects with mass, like stars, planets, and even people, can cause a curvature in this space-time fabric. This curvature influences how objects move through both space and time, creating what we perceive as gravity. As an object approaches the speed of light, time is experienced differently for the traveler than it is for the observer. What may feel like moments for the traveler could be years, decades, or even centuries for the observer. This is known as time dilation, and it's a pretty significant hurdle to overcome. Again, the solution was pretty simple. Don't move. FTL travel in this universe is accomplished through use of the Garrick core. Go watch that video. The short version is the Garrick core manipulates space-time so that the object itself is not moving at all, but rather space is moving around the object. This manipulation creates a region of distorted space-time essentially allowing the ship to traverse great distances without experiencing the full effects of relativistic motion. Think of it like a surfer riding a wave. They stand stationary on the board while the water moves them through space. And because of relativity, moving through space is the same as moving through time. That example is a pretty crude oversimplification, but you get the idea. Since the object itself is not moving, the effects of time dilation are mitigated but not entirely subverted. For safety reasons, ships need to exit FTL travel far outside populated systems. And because of the Lorentz factor, there's a hard limit on how fast they can travel within these systems. So traversing space is not instantaneous. In actuality, it's a very cumbersome experience. And because of this, many people opt to stay within their solar system. 
resulting in densely packed population hubs across the galaxy. The effects of time dilation are present and accounted for through the QCN, allowing for a steady and consistent keeping of time. The proper keeping of time is such a pivotal aspect of advanced civilization that the Alliance has an entire branch of government dedicated to it. Whole philosophical institutions have formed around the trade, worshipping the metaphysical practice of essentially transcending time itself. And the technology developed during the creation of the QCN provided a deeper understanding of quantum phenomena, which proved vital when developing the Cynics, which is essentially space internet. Time is a lot more interesting than it might initially seem. On a micro level, it's relatively straightforward and easy to understand. But when scaled to a cosmic setting, there are a lot of considerations to be made, paradoxes to think through, and measures to be taken. In our next video, we'll cover what happens when this all goes horribly wrong. So subscribe to Lanar Hasano to learn more. Also be sure to check out some of our other communities linked in the description. Thanks for watching.